There are two primary ways that you can install jQuery on your website. You can download the jQuery library from jQuery.com and host it right within your website, or you can include jQuery from a content delivery network and have a third party uh, host the jQuery library for you. Now, before I get into the reason why you'd want to do both, uh, either or or both, um, I'll talk about in a moment. But before that, I want to let you know that there are two um, primary versions of jQuery available to download. Now, they are the same library, but there are two versions of that library. There's the production version and the development version. The production version is a what is called minified and compressed version. And basically, all the white space has been removed from the library, like so. You can see that everything is just uh, kind of totally compressed. There, you, it's totally unreadable. It looks like mumbo jumbo, uh, nothing. Like you don't, you can't understand this because it's compressed. It's the minified version, and the reason why you'd want to do that is because it loads quicker, smaller file size, and it's called the production version because it is for your live website or application. And the development version is for testing and development. It's a totally uncompressed and readable version of the code, like so. You can see here, uh, you can read it. You can start to see the comments. You can kind of, you can start to read the if statements uh, and you can see the variables and the arrays. And you can start to see that the jQuery library is a readable uh, program. You can actually read it. And the reason why you'd want to do that is so you can actually read uh, jQuery and comb through it if you need to. But in all honesty, I've never actually opened up and read through the jQuery library ever at all. So you probably won't need to do that. It's just for those people who might want to be able to read it for some reason. Anyway, both of those versions can actually be downloaded from jQuery.com right here. And now uh, the jQuery homepage looks like this right here. This is the jQuery homepage and you can go ahead and read through, you know, the documentation and stuff if you want, but we're going to be covering a lot of jQuery in the next few sections. So don't worry about that and just click the download jQuery button. Now here you're going to be taken to a page uh, with a few different links and source files and, and directions, and it could be quite confusing. Uh, basically this is how you download the, um, the local version. This is how you download jQuery from the site so you can host it on your own site. So you can see the 1.x and 2.x. Well, the difference between the two is 1.x um, supports Internet Explorer 6, 7, and 8, and 2.x doesn't. So this is for those forward-thinking web developers like me who don't like to support uh, browsers that should not exist. And so basically, that's what 2x is, and this is what 1x is. They're essentially the same API, just a uh, less support for Internet Explorer 6, 7, and 8. Now, you can download and install using a content delivery network. Now, jQuery has their own content delivery network, and so all you really have to do is go to the website code.jquery.com, and that's the same website, just the CDN page. And you can see the latest stable versions. we got the jQuery core here, 2x, 1x, uh, and migrate. Migrate is if you've been using 1x and you need to move to 2x uh, and you're afraid of breaking something, so you would also include migrate. But 2x is what we're using, and that's um, basically this is the CDN version. And now, before we install the CDN, I want to show you how to download and install the local version. So here we have the jQuery.com slash download. I'm going to go ahead and download the uncompressed development version. So here we go. jQuery has been downloaded. Show up my finder. Now I'm going to go ahead and drag jQuery-2.1.4 over into my jQuery folder, which is the site that I, uh, the folder I created for this section of the course. And so you have installed at HTML and jQuery 2.1.4. Now, a common convention is to have all your JavaScript files, whether they're jQuery or otherwise, in a folder called JS or JavaScript. And that's just to keep it out of the main root directory where you'll have your HTML or PHP files. And so there we go. We got our JS right here. Now what we need to do is in the folder. Now, if you haven't created it already, go ahead and create a jQuery folder. I might have jumped the gun there uh, on you downloading that file. So create a jQuery folder, add an HTML file, HTML file called install.html just with the basic structure and a title. 
And then you got your JS folder with the jQuery in it. So go ahead and get up to speed with that and meet me right back here. Now you are going to want to install your jQuery uh, script either in the head or before the closing body tag. The reason why you'd want to do it in the head is because it works and that's fine. Uh, and that's, that's, I believe what even jQuery.com suggests, but, uh, in the real world, you work with more than one script. You work with more than jQuery and a JavaScript file. Uh, you have plugins and you could have, you know, five, 10, 15, uh, scripts running at once. And it's a huge lag and takes a lot of load time. Even if you have the, the minified versions, loading them in your head means you're going to load all these scripts first before your web page, And that means people are waiting for a bunch of invisible scripts in the background to load just to be able to read the pricing of your chiropractic services or to find out when the freaking zoo is open. You know what I mean? So I suggest putting your scripts always at the bottom. And there is one exception uh, for um, a specific script called Modernizer, but we'll get there. Uh, we'll get there later. We don't need to talk about it now. So all your scripts uh, at the before the closing body tag. So to hook in jQuery, the local version here on our site is use a script tag. Now you don't need to use the type attribute actually. We've been using it so far and that's just for practice, but because HTML5 uh, is forward thinking and progressive, it doesn't actually need that because uh, JavaScript is the default script language for HTML5 and we don't need to specify the type. But you do need to specify the source, which is js slash jQuery dash 2.1.4.js and there we go. And just to open it, just so you can see, this is the jQuery file. Okay, so we've got uh, jQuery installed locally. Now, to prove that it works, we need to add a new script and we need to include our own JavaScript file. So create a new file in your JS folder there. Let's call it script.js. And here, I'm just going to save script.js. Now, back to our installed at HTML, we need to hook that in using source js slash script.js. Now our script file is hooked in, but instead of using JavaScript, plain old JavaScript, we're going to use jQuery. Now the function call to jQuery to initiate jQuery, uh, there's a couple ways, but this is uh, one of the ways. And we'll get to this, uh, the syntax shortly, but for now, this is how you uh, call jQuery and anything in between this function uh, basically is jQuery. This is where you write your jQuery code. Now, so let's do an alert. You could see here, this is how you call an alert in jQuery. So right there, alert. It's a lot simpler. No window dot alert uh, or document dot write, so on and so forth. It's just alert. Now save that. Let's go to our browser and see if that worked. There we go. Hello. So just to prove that this is actual jQuery, um, let's go back to our install file and I'm going to remove the jQuery library. And refresh, there we go. Uh, it doesn't work. jQuery isn't being called. So that is how that works. So now the other way is to download and install using a CDN. Now CDN, uh, jQuery has their own CDN. So all you really have to do is go to, like I said, code.jQuery.com. Uh, and I showed you here just the different versions that you can download. Now what you want to do is choose the version you want. I'm going to say the minified jQuery core 2.1.4. Copy this URL right up here in the address bar. I'm going to comment this script out and I'm going to put another script here. And all you got to do is do source again, paste that address and remove the scheme in the address here in the URL. The reason why you do that is because uh, whatever scheme you're coming from. So if your website is HTTP or HTTPS, this means it will load whatever you are coming from. So if you're coming from a, a secure connection, HTTPS, then this will be HTTPS to be consistent with the security of your site. If you're just coming from a plain vanilla HTTP, then it will just load HTTP because HTTPS isn't going to do you any good anyway if you're on a non-secure connection. So you could just do this when you're loading your jQuery scripts and any other scripts from a CDN. Just use two forward slashes rather than putting the scheme, which is HTTP or HTTPS. Save that and our script file already has our alert. So let's see if this works. There we go. Hello. It works perfect. And just as proof that this actually works, I'm going to comment this script out. 
save and, and refresh and you could see the jQuery doesn't work anymore because we don't have the library. Now, why would you use a CDN versus a local download? Why would you use one or the other? Well, many websites on the web are actually using a CDN like Mac CDN, jQuery, Google, Microsoft to serve up your jQuery library. This means that it's very likely that the user visiting your site has a cached version of jQuery right in their browser and will not actually need to load it when they visit your website, which means faster load time on your site for that user. Now the cons of using a CDN are if your user has lost their internet connection, they won't be able to load jQuery since you're relying on a CDN, which, re which requires an internet connection to load. This means that none of your jQuery code will work on your site. However, this user case is kind of moot because if they have no internet connection, then they can't visit your site anyway. So who cares if jQuery doesn't work, right? But the other con of using a CDN is if the CDN server is down, then your site will be unable to load jQuery. And if your site relies on jQuery for lots of features and functionality, then you're out of luck until the CDN servers are back up and running. The solution to these cons are to use both a local version and a CDN to ensure your website is never without access to jQuery. All you got to do is here in your page here, first load the CDN version. So first you want to load the CDN. That's just, it's better to do the CDN uh, because it's a bit quicker and uh, you could quickly download the latest version and it's right there. And then follow it up with a local version, but with a script tag with some JavaScript to test to see if jQuery is available. And if it is, then don't load the local version. If it's not, then load the local version. Looks like so. We've got a script tag, and instead of doing the source, we're actually going to do a bit of JavaScript here. Window dot jQuery. Now this is going to check to see if the jQuery object is available. If it is, then, then great. Perfect. Uh, then you're going to load the CDN. This way it won't go any further or the or operator document dot write. And in here, I'm going to use single quotation marks because they're going to have double quotation marks within the script script. And you can see here that this script changed color because I'm using a script tag inside a script tag. So it kind of, this is closing this original script and we don't want that. You could see it's actually thinking it's closing this. We don't want that. The way you can cancel that out is by preceding this forward slash with a backslash. So it kind of makes a peace sign, I guess. And that, uh, that cancels out that forward slash, tells the uh, program here, hey, uh, this isn't actually part of the original script tag. This is a script tag within a script tag. And that's how you deal with that. Source, we're going to want to use double quotation marks because we're within single quotes. If you were using double quotes here, you need to use single quotes here, vice versa, so on and so forth. And then JS, jQuery dash 2.1.4 dot js save that is going to load your cdn first and then the local version if cdn is unavailable and so i'm just going to give you a little comment here and there we go load the cdn if the cdn fails to load serve up the local version good to go and those are the two ways to install jquery and just proof that these both work um, together because they're not they're not loading both at the same time because that could create conflicts especially if you have different versions being loaded uh, so the, just as proof that this actually works, I'm going to save and make sure that uh, we're still getting the alert. And there we go. Hello is there. And that's how you download and install jQuery. Uh, don't worry, we got lots and lots of jQuery coming up uh, in the next few lectures and the next couple sections. So I'll see you there.